If you click on this video, then it's probably for either two reasons. First one is possibly that you saw the integral that is um, on the thumbnail, attempted to solve the problem but couldn't find its value, so you decided to click here just to see the solution. Or the second option is you really just wanted to see the solution without any attempt at all. So for either one of those two, it's fine. <laughs> it's just whatever. But um, yeah, that's quite a title, honestly. You might well call it, call it clickbait or anything. I, I don't know. I'll let you decide on that. But anyways, as you see from that thumbnail here in today's video, we have the following integral from 0 to pi over 2 of our um, integrand, which is um, composed of trigonometric functions and natural logs. Well, a natural log. That is the co cotangent x multiplied by the natural log of secant x dx. And it's um, quite simple, really. It's just doing um, u substitution, converting that into a new variable. Then eventually it actually comes to a series that everybody knows. Then evaluating that um, with the integrals of that series, of course. And it actually comes down to a little well-known constant that, well, I that constant's actually it's in the thumbnail itself if you can see closely so but I, I will say that that constant is not the answer but it's there because it's probably subtle but anyway i just listed that there's really no other remarks and you're here to see the solution basically that's why you see that in the title so anyway let's just jump in so let's do a change of variables let's actually call the variable t and we'll set that equal to um cosine of x then if we take the differentiation so dt is equal to negative sine of x dx and then if i solve for the dx substitution itself i'll just divide negative um negative sine fx to both sides so here we have dx is equal to or it's not supposed to be divide um it's supposed to be dx is equal to dt divided by uh, negative sine of x, so I'll just put the negative out here, sine of x. And then here we need to compute our bounds, so here if I let uh, 0, or if I let x equals 0 for here, then that means our new t, um, so x equals 0, then t would be um, 1, and then if I let x equals pi over 2, then t is going to equal zero. Now I know for this substitution over here, it sounds very, you know, weird to say because there's a t variable, the differential, and then there's the a function in sine of x. But um, don't worry about that. Let me go back to the original function or the original integral, fix the integrand, and see how what we can do with that in order to make the proper substitution. So if I rewrite this whole integral again, so let's see, zero, pi over 2 of our given, so cotangent x, then multiply with the natural log of secant of x dx. Then from here, um, if I actually just rewrite this a little bit better, so we know that cotangent of x is basically just uh, cosine of x divided by uh, sine of x. And then we know that the natural log, um, so we have the natural log, and then secant of x is basically just 1 over cosine of x. Uh, 1 over cosine of x. Then we um, do this a little further. I know I'm just taking baby steps. We're doing this one step at a time, but that's okay. So what you'll see is that if I can rewrite cos 1 over cosine of x as cosine of x to the power negative 1, using the rules of the natural logs, we just move that exponent to the front of our natural log um, function. So it'll be the negative natural log. And since negative 1 is a constant, I'll just move that outside of our integral. So pi over 2, then 0 cosine of x, then divided by sine of x, then multiply with the natural log of uh, cosine of x dx. And hence you see why we make the necessary substitutions over here that just like what we do from here. Okay, so now we plug all this back in. So let's actually just switch this new integral for the black marker. Now if we make the, um, I just said it again. Now if we make the necessary substitutions, we see that here, we have our new bounds, so let's see, this will be 0 on the top, and then 1 on the bottom. Uh, cosine, and then divided by, uh, well, that would be now t, then divided by sine of x, then multiply with the natural log of t, then multiply with our, d our dx substitution, which that would be um, negative dt, then divided by sine of x. Now I can simplify this a little further. What you'll see is that we have a negative and a negative, so that cancels out. 
However, we have to switch the bounds of integration because we have a larger number being the lower bound and a smaller number being the upper bound, which is not the case. So that means this is still a negative of the integral. Let me give it a little more space. Negative, then the integral. So this will be one and then zero, right? Then you'll see that um, I'll multiply the sine of x to the denominator over here. So t then divided by sine of x or sine square of x. Uh, ln of t then dt. Now, what you'll notice is that we use our rules of trigon our, our trigonometric rules. We know that sine of x can be written by using that um, fundamental theorem of trigonometry that says cosine square of, cosine square of x plus sine square of x is equal to one. But if you do the algebra, we can actually say that this is just one minus cosine square of x is equal to sine square of x. But we said that cosine of x is equal to t. So put in that substitution, and then you'll see that our new integral we have is the following the negative integral from 0 to 1 of t divided by of um, 1 minus t squared and then multiplied by ln of t dt, like so. So now here comes the interesting part. So notice that uh, we can actually use, well, we're going to actually evaluate the following um, t divided by 1 minus t squared. What you'll notice is that if you see the following is that strictly for this condition that for um, the absolute value of t if it's strictly less than 1, then we can write the, um, put the colon in the wrong place, just a comma, then put, then put a colon. Then you can say that um, t divided by 1 minus t squared. Notice this that um, I'll factor out the t, so it's t times 1 divided by 1 minus t squared. That's actually in the form of a geometric series with the following inequality. That's the condition needed since we're integrating it between those numbers, so that actually holds. So what you notice is I'll write this as t, then write this as the expanded sum as 1 plus t squared uh, plus t to the 4, then um, so on and so forth, right? Then um, I'll just distribute the t in. So this is t plus t cubed plus t to the fifth plus uh, t to the seventh. And that keeps going. Doing this again, you'll get that. We can just write that series out. We get that this is the infinite sum starting with our index of n is equal zero of t to the power two n plus one. So now from there, I'll just um, put back the substitution. So let me just rewrite that same integral from over here. 0, 1, then t divided by 1 minus t squared ln of t dt is indeed equal to the integral from, um, same integral of course, 0, 1, then factor it, or not factor, but substitute with our geometric series that we just rewrit, rewritten. So the infinite sum n is equal 0, then t to the power 2n plus 1 of ln of t dt. So with the following with convergence, we can actually interchange the order of summation and integration. So now this time we'll have that the uh, summation comes first when writing this out. So we have the infinite sum, write that a little better. We have the infinite sum, n is equal zero. And then now comes the, um, the integral. So from zero to one of t to the power two n plus one, then multiplied by ln of t uh, dt. So from there, now um, it's pretty straightforward that you can see that we must have we must uh, perform a integration by parts method. So choose your um, choose your function which you want to differentiate and choose your function which you want to integrate. Obviously, we can see that the easier function to integrate is well. First, I'll say differentiate. So we'll let u equals ln of t, then du is equal to 1 over t dt, and choosing our function to integrate dv is equal to 2 to the power 2n plus 1 dt. Integrate that so v is equal to t to the power 2n plus 2, and then divided by 2n plus 2. So now from there, though, let's actually just perform the necessary um, substitutions. So let's see, just rewrite that same integral from over here. We're, we're looking at this piece specifically. We'll worry about the summation later. So we have t to the power 2n plus 1 um, ln of t dt. Then we do the uh, u times v, then subtract the integral for v du. So here, ln of t, then multiply with uh, t to the power 2n plus 2 divided by 2n plus 2. Integrate this from uh, 0 to 1. Then we subtract with our u 
tests are V times DU. But we'll, we'll, we'll make the substitution first. And well, we're gonna evaluate some things first before we continue further. So let's see, uh, zero, one, then we have one over T, then multiply with the um, T, two N plus two, then divided by two N plus two, DT. Now, you'll notice that um, if we want to evaluate this term, if we plug one, notice that ln of one is zero, so the, um, the, one, the term evaluated at x equals one, or t is equal to one is zero. And then you'll notice that if you plug zero, you plug zero for t, then it's also zero, so therefore this whole term is just equal to zero. So that vanishes, and so we're only left to evaluate this integral on the right, the negative integral of zero to one of one over t times t to the power two n plus two divided by two n plus two dt. All right, but from here, you'll notice that um, 2n plus 2, it does not depend on the variable for t, so it's a constant, so therefore, I'll just move that outside of our integral. And of course, this is a negative, so negative 1 divided by 2n plus 2, then multiply integral 0, 1, off. Um, so we have a t to the power 2n plus 2, then divided by t. They have the, sh they have the same base, so... In other words, the um, denominator for t can be written as t to the negative 1 if you write that in terms of exponents. So using combining your rules for exponents, it's basically just subtract 1 from the base. So basically, it's t to the power 2n plus 2 subtract 1. And so we have the new integrand of t to the power 2n plus 1 dt. Right. Then continuing further, this is actually a very... Um, very easy integral to calculate, it's, um, use, just use your power rules of course, so it's, um, here I'm just writing the same constant from outside, 2n plus 2, then we have, um, so add the 1, then divide by the exponent, so this is t to the 2n plus 2, then divide by 2n plus 2, evaluate this from 0 to 1. Um, what you'll notice is that this is very easy to show that um, this is just equal to 1 divided by 2n plus 2. Plug 1, so it's 1 over this um, denominator here. Plug 0, the whole thing becomes 0. Um, therefore, you can write that this is just negative 1 then divided by um, 2n plus 2 squared, since we just multiplied the, the denominators here together. So with this, now, um, is this the same integral over here? Now over here, just this arrow just denotes this, um, what we solve here. So now we have the new integral, so, or the integral evaluated. So, and then we have a negative from here and here, so that'll just cancel each other out. So we're just left with the infinite sum, n equals zero of one divided by two n plus two quantity square. All right, um, here's a little simplification what we can do. I can actually just um, factor out the two from that quantity. N is equal zero, then we have two, then N plus one square. Evaluate the square from here, so two squares, four. So one over four, and I'll factor that outside. So we have one over four, multiply with the infinite sum, N is equal zero of um, one divided by, so um, N plus one square. And then if we actually just do a little um, re-indexing, so here I'll change this so that our index will start at um, n is equal to one. And then once we fix, and if we were to fix the um, index, so we have one over four, multiply the infinite sum of n is equal one, well, starting with that index, of one divided by n squared. Ah, but what's this? This infinite sum here is actually known as the Riemann zeta function at um, s is equal to two. So I'll write it like this. This is the Riemann zeta of two, but I actually proved this in a video that this is actually just equal to pi squared divided by six. So I'll leave that evaluation in the link in the description below to you guys for you guys to view. And then if we just substitute that's just one over four, then multiply by pi squared divided by six. Therefore, the final answer is pi squared divided by um, 24. Let me write this again. Pi squared divided by 24, like so. Okay. There we have it, the final answer, drawn in the black, or I keep saying wrong colors, red box over here. So there you have it. You have your solution if you get stuck. Um, if you had something like this while well, before viewing this video, great. If not, totally fine. At least you learned something, right? So yeah, um, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.